Hello, I am Gabriella D'Elia, and I am honored to be sharing on Fungal Diversity Survey, also known as Fundus, for the Northeast Mycological Federation Online Conference 2021. The title of this presentation is Conserving Fungi Together, and it will discuss a fundus overview and how to help. I'll be stopping my video share so you can see the presentation. So just a bit on my background before we get into fundus, I'm currently the fundus conservation coordinator. So I manage the conservation programs and our lovely volunteers. I've been uh, in the mountains of, of the Rocky Mountains in Northern Utah for the past couple of years, the land where I'm from. I'm currently the vice president of the Mushroom Society of Utah and I founded the Northern Utah Funga Fundus local project that looks at the fungal biodiversity of the region. I've been a club member for maybe eight years, uh, the longest running with the Puget Sound Mycological Society up in Seattle, Washington. And I have a background in education, uh, community science, applied mycology, and I studied fungal ecology up in Seattle. So fungal diversity survey, who we are. Fundus's mission is to increase scientific knowledge and public awareness of the critical role of fungi in the health of our ecosystems and to better utilize and protect them in a world of rapid climate change and habitat loss. What makes Fundus unique? We are a volunteer community science nonprofit. Fundus equips community scientists with the tools to document the diversity and distribution of fungi and their habitats across North America in the service of conservation. If you are unfamiliar with the term community science, um, it's also known as citizen science. And this is distributed scientific research voluntarily conducted in whole or in part by amateur, we can also call them pro-am, non-professional scientists. Community science often uses widely available technology like smartphones and apps that allow volunteers to record and share data. Community science allows experiments and inquiries to run on a large scale ongoing basis that can advance scientific research with larger and more diverse data sets that might have been otherwise unavailable. Community science can improve the transparency and accessibility of scientific research to all participants. Recent innovations that have supported the growth of mycology community science include the recognition that most fungal species formerly thought to occur across continents are actually complexes of species. IDs can be enabled by meta barcoding DNA. Online databases and portals have been established. There have been leaps in the digitization of specimens and of observation data. And there is more recognition of the vital role that fungi play in our ecosystems. In 2017, Fundus was established as a 501c3, as a 501c3 uh, under the name North American Mycoflora Project. And in 2020, we narrowed our focus from documenting everything to documenting threatened fungi and crowdsourcing the data needed to protect them. We are known as Fungal Diversity Survey now, which better represents what we exist to protect, the fungi, of course. Fundus addresses a major gap in biodiversity conservation, fungi. Fungi are ecologically important. Fungi are keystone organisms that support planetary biodiversity. Among other roles, they're essential symbionts with almost all plant species, and plants wouldn't have even moved onto land without the help of their fungal allies. Fungi are hyper-diverse. The estimates of the number of species ranges from two to 12 million, but fungi are poorly known. We have names for less than 5% of all fungal species, so only 5% of them have even been described. Fungi are threatened by the same forces that are threatening plants and animals, including habitat loss, pollution, over-exploitation, invasive species, climate change, and one that's a little more unique to fungi, loss of symbiotic hosts. The bottom line is that fungi have been overlooked in conservation. 
the number of species evaluated for the red list status, for example, is negligible compared with plants and animals. Fungi are important and beautiful. Look at them. Our planet wouldn't exist as we know it without fungi. Fungi have incredible species diversity, morphological diversity, and ecological diversity. And they also provide a diversity of use and application. While understanding fungal biodiversity will help conserve fungi and protect the health of our planet, which is of course important, understanding fungal biodiversity is also the most important foundational knowledge for most further research in the field of mycology. Understanding fungal biodiversity can greatly impact our understanding of fungal ecology, climate change, applied mycology, mycomaterials, plant pathogens, mushroom cultivation, mushroom foraging, mushroom medicine, fungi appreciation, and fungi culture. So I'd like to highlight some of the subfields in mycology where an understanding of fungal biodiversity is helpful and if not necessary. As I'm talking to a group of people who are probably already interested in fungi to a certain degree, um, I think it's pretty important to discuss the various subfields in mycology where fungal biodiversity can really um, make an impact. In 2018, a study looked at 20 manufactured reishi products like pills, tablets, and teas, and 17 grow your own reishi kits. If you're unfamiliar with the reishi mushroom, this mushroom refers to a vast species complex of dozens of species in the Ganoderma genus. And all of these reishi products tested in this study claims to be the species Ganoderma lucidum. So of the 17 grow your own kits tested, almost half of them were not Ganoderma lucidum, surprise. They were actually Ganoderma lingi, a different species entirely. Only one kit actually contained Ganoderma lucidum. Of the 20 manufactured products, products, 93% of them were Ganoderma lingi. If fruiting bodies of non-native Ganoderma taxa are cultivated, these grow your own kits will likely end up in the environment. And the effects of these non-native species to natural ecosystems is not known and needs to be investigated. Another study here shows the importance of knowing the identity of the mushroom that is in question in a study. This study writes that the use of particularly divergent nomenclature has caused major difficulties in the evaluation of the results of pharmacological studies. This study's title is pretty much asking the same question we are, what is Ganoderma lucidum in the molecular era when we can do genetic testing? When the study itself, uh, whether it be a medicinal mushroom study or uh, an ecology, ecological study of fungi, when that study can't even trace what the mushroom species is that they're studying, then there's not a verification of the species. And if there's not actual verification of species, the entire line of research can and should be called into question. And we don't want that. We want our fungi to be studied, valued, and appreciated and conserved. A, the next example touches on the importance of understanding fungal biodiversity for edibles, as well as foraging. Mycologist Bryn Dentinger, who is now at the University of Utah, tested 23 porcini specimens as a result of soliciting on mushroom observer, which is a form of community science in itself. On his blog, Bryn writes, I had my students in mycology at the University of Utah extract DNA, PCR, Amplify, and Sanger sequence the ITS region from 23 specimens from mushroom observer, plus a few others. Uh, they, they found at least three undescribed species in this study that were also unknown to Bryn Dentinger, as well as two species of Boleta saparins that should probably be separated into two species. You can view more of Bryn's uh, work online and at his WordPress, his blog. And uh, the final uh, 
The final example I'd like to make is on understanding fungal biodiversity for climate change. Collecting data on fungal biodiversity can help us respond to changing climates. This week, an opinion piece by Toby Kears and Merlin Sheldrake was published in The Guardian, uh, underlining a powerful and underappreciated ally in the climate crisis, who other than fungi. Articles like this are beginning to surface in our media left and right that point towards the vital need to understand more about fungal biodiversity. In this piece, they state that mycorrhizal fungal networks and the nutrient flows and processes they manage should be considered a global public good analogous to clean air and fresh water. This is quite an extraordinary claim for fungi who have been long forgotten in the systematic conservation efforts and action. So why, why does Fundus focus on community science? Put simply, there are not enough trained professionals, there's not enough time, and there's not enough funding to do what needs to be done at such a great scale. We might be losing fungal species faster than we can even document them. At least 10% of European macro fungi are threatened with extinction, mainly due to changing land use and increasing nitrogen deposit. And we don't even know, we don't even have the extensive baseline fungal occurrence knowledge that Europe does. Adding tools to those who are already doing the movement just makes sense. If community scientists are already documenting fungi, we might as well give them the tools to make better, to make scientific contributions. And of course, we can build up these communities of passionate mycophiles. Community scientists have transformed the protection of birds. If community scientists can do this for birds, it's probably possible to do this for fungi. Take, for example, the growth and success of eBird. Launched in 2002 by Cornell Lab of Ornithology, eBird is an online database of bird observations, providing scientists, researchers, and amateur naturalists with real-time data about bird distribution and abundance. On their website, eBird states that eBird is an important resource for land trusts to grow their support and capacity eBird helps to build capacity by engaging the birding community to collect baseline data on land trust properties where staff resources are often limited. These data are then used to assist with stewardship requirements, inform land prioritization for conservation, and assess management in areas that are key for birds. When we look at the numbers, we see that 300,000 people at least in North America are already documenting fungi. And this is just a statistic off of one of the online databases, iNaturalist. It is also noted on this slide that from August 2021 to November 2021, over 50,000 mushroom observations were made on iNaturalist, greatly increasing the number of total observations, which is a huge jump in a very short period of time. The fungal, fungal awareness is really growing and expanding um, throughout our mainstream culture. 10,000 people or more are already members of a mushroom club passionate about something that has to do with fungi. There is a big opportunity for mycology right now. If the main problem is lack of high quality data, yet all of these mushroomers are out there gathering data, we can A, better equip them, and B, actually do something valuable with this data. Given the decline in funding for mycology, <clears throat> excuse me, Given the decline, let me get some water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Given the decline in funding for mycology and taxonomy generally, we are curious if amateur microfiles could crowdsource fungal documentation and discovery and fill this data gap. 
Fundus's engagement mo model has four levels of increasing information value to science. So you can see here we have document, sequence, voucher, and then super user in the middle. Fundus aims to tap into this snowballing fascination with fungi and interest these people in contributing to conservation and science engaging them in relatively simple tasks at first and then gradually involve those who want to do more in increasingly more complex tasks. This four-tiered um, engagement model can be seen through this graphic on the right. So on the outside tier, on the outside circle, you see the largest um, section document. And this is where community scientists are encouraged to document in the field with photos that are geotagged and time stamped and upload these observations to the internet. Two of our programs focus on documenting the rare fungi challenges and the biodiversity database. In the next circle inward, we have sequence. Our third program, Accessible Sequencing, has made DNA sequencing accessible to clubs and individuals at low cost or through grants, through Fundus grants. Next toward the center is vouchering. Community scientists can preserve well-documented dried specimens in curated fungaria. Finally, in the center is the superuser. The most motivated superusers will engage in extracting DNA in home or in your do-it-yourself labs. Uh, they might teach others how to analyze DNA sequences and perhaps even describe new species. The world is limitless when it comes to the super users. So let's break down current fundus conservation programs and look at what we do. We have three conservation programs, the Rare Fungi Challenges, the Biodiversity Database, and Accessible Sequencing. The Fundus Rare Fungi Challenges. These encourage community scientists to look for species that are thought to be threatened or rare. Our West Coast Challenge was launched last fall in October of 2020, ran to March 2021, and uh, with the support and collaboration of well-known mycologists and conservationists, um, generated a significant number of notable observations. Year two of the West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge is underway. Our Northeast Challenge is in preparation, our, our second Rare Fungi Challenge, and will officially kick off early next summer 2022. Very exciting. The Northeast Challenge region will go from Quebec down to Pennsylvania. So a little on the West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge. In October of 2020, I mentioned we launched the pilot project for a West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge to find out if we could get people to care about fungal conservation and if amateurs can make scientifically valuable observations. The species were carefully chosen to cover different habitats, geographies, seasonalities, and form groups. Some species were more rare, others were maybe just poorly documented. And all species were easy to identify without microscopy, which is an important factor for making these species accessible to identify um, more, more uh, at a larger scale. Importantly, we found that mycophiles are deeply concerned about conservation and it's the mushroom people who might be tapped in first. The pilot, the West Coast pilot, saw encouraging results. Seven out of 10 target species were found. 91 observations were made by 62 finders. 20 vouchers for all seven of the documented species were made. <clears throat> we got detailed habitat information for 47 observations. We saw two major range extensions, several new locations, and um, at least one possible new species. Three species were not found at all in the pilot project. These species are Lepiota luteophila, Romeria purpurissima, and Wolveriella serecta. It's important to note that these new locations of these observations could not have been documented without the existence of this challenge. This challenge really ignited community scientists to go out and to um, record their documentations, their documents. 
some challenge species that were observed in high numbers compared to previous years, like Bondarzuia occidentalis that we're seeing now, or the Pathicodonia spathalata. Um, high observations of these suggested to be rare or threatened species um, points toward the fact that these species might be undersurveyed, and um, they may be more common, more commonly occurring than we assumed. However, these fungi still may be threatened because their habitats are, and it is still highly encouraged to continue making observations of these more common species to better understand them and their phenology. As this year, 2021 continues, the West Coast Rare Fungi Challenge does as well, and with even more species. In October of 2021, we added 10 species to our challenge for a grand total of 20 rare fungi species to search for up and down the West Coast. I'd like to mention that we would not have these brand new species flyers that are so beautiful without the work of one of our volunteers, Tiffany Thaden. You can print these among many other educational materials and resources from the Fundus website. So when are you all gonna, gonna say, talk about the Northeast challenge already? <laughs> I've been talking to you about the opposite coast for the past few minutes. And let me introduce in greater formality, the Northeast Rare Fungi Challenge. This is Fundus's second challenge that will be launching in early summer of 2022. This species here depicted is Dendrocolivia racemosa. And it's kind of fun. I want to highlight that this species also grows in the West Coast, um, but is not one of our rare fungi species in the West Coast. Um, however, it looks very similar to one of our species, rare fungi species on the rest, West Coast that is still uh, in the process of being described, Dendrocolibia uh, pycnoramella. So we're getting a lot of these observations on the West Coast as it's much more abundant than the more little lesser known Dendrocolibia pycnoramella. Um, they look very similar. Pycnoramella has shorter, bushier um, pegs or branches. And it'll be really interesting to see how many species we can find of the Dendrocolibia racemosa on the East Coast. So what will you all do while you wait for the challenge to launch? As a part of Fundus's soft launch effort, we have made our list of rare fungi for the Northeast Rare Fungi Challenge public on our website. So if you're looking for something to do during those dreary Northeast winter afternoons, you can start doing your own research, thumbing through your field guides, planning habitat visits, um, gaining familiarity with these species uh, that fundus and us at the Northeast Rare Fungi Challenge think are rare or threatened. These two photos depict a mushroom species on that list, Mycorrhizal tricholoma grave in its natural habitat, where we see also Nemp's very own Rick Vandepoel and his dog gently saying hello to the young specimen. Tricholoma grave is fortunate enough to even have its own Nemp presentation this year, uh, presented by Bill Bakaitis, that I greatly look forward to watching. So once again, go check out Bilbakaitis' talk on Tricholoma grave as it's one of the 20 rare fungi species uh, on our rare fungi species list for the Northeast Rare Fungi Challenge. I also definitely wouldn't miss Rick Vandepoel's talk as he's diving into the rare fungi of the Northeast. One of the central features of our rare fungi challenges is the wealth of information that we provide about each species. One of our core materials are these astounding trifold pamphlets that outline each challenge species, its phenology, as well as why additional data is valuable and needed. You can visit the West Coast Challenge webpage to view all of the pamphlets and print off the ones you'd like to bring into the field with you. Be on the lookout for the launching of the long-awaited Northeast species pamphlets this winter and spring. Fundus's second program is the Biodiversity Database, or the FBD for short. The FBD is a database of 
70,000 observations and counting, vetted observations within the website iNaturalist. The biodiversity database is built around the goal of encouraging more non-professional mycophiles to create more high quality observations. It is supported by a community of respected identifiers with the ultimate goal of creating a database that can be utilized by mycologists and conservationists. A similar program is being planned for Mushroom Observer. Our biodiversity database aims to address two critical needs common to all conservation work, getting reliable data and lots of it. Unfortunately, many fungal observations posted to iNaturalist like these on the left here are of little use for scientific analysis. Um, and you know, no shame, we've all been there and made poor quality mushroom observations, but now we have these educational communities and resources like Fungal Diversity Survey to help um, teach people what makes a high quality mushroom observation. And research grade for fungi is not a reliable indicator of data quality on iNaturalist. So we've made our own parameters for data quality through the biodiversity database. The biodiversity database um, really engages a team of support. Of course, we have our observers contributing their high quality mushroom observations to the biodiversity database. And we also rely on our curators to maintain quality standards and to correspond with observers. And last but definitely not least, our identifiers uh, review observations. Uh, they can provide or correct identifications, making our biodiversity database much more worthwhile to those who contribute to it. So what belongs in the biodiversity database? The FBD is a database for high quality macrofungi observations. Macrofungi are distinguished by having spore bearing structures visible to the naked eye. So we can think of mushrooms, brackets, puffballs, false truffles, cup fungi. Most macrofungi are usually in the ascomycota or basidiomycota taxa. And parameters include taxa in the fungi kingdom. So this includes molds, yeast, glomeromycota. And while fundus doesn't yet have identifiers for these subsections like molds and yeasts, we will want to collect these data so that somebody might be able to use them in the future as they are in fact part of the fungi kingdom. The FBD doesn't however accept slime molds as they're in the protista kingdom. And the FBD doesn't accept lichens either as these observations end up congesting our database um, that really focuses on macro fungi. This is an example here of what our biodiversity database looks like when you view it on iNaturalist. We have wonderful high quality observations coming in every day. It takes massive amounts of data to predict the probability of a species going extinct. A naturalist has close to 5 million observations of fungi, including lichens worldwide. The number is almost doubling every year, but at least in North America, but that is a long way from the 1 billion bird observations logged over two decades by eBird contributors. Even though each individual bird observation is far less robust, then our typical high quality fungal observation, a billion of them make it possible to produce 300 peer reviewed publications. Fundus has just began vetting fungal observations on iNaturalist and training beginners to make better observations. So far though, we have racked up over 70,000 observations in the Fundus biodiversity database. And I do wanna mention in the month of November, 2021, 10,000 observations have been made or added to on the Fundus Biodiversity Database. One obstacle is that each observation um, has to be added to our iNaturalist project, usually one by one or in a, in a bulk, bulk upload um, process, but it's important to manually upload these observations. Uh, otherwise they don't, they don't get collected into the Fundus Biodiversity Database. Oh, 
Oh, I do want to mention on that note that uh, mass importing observations, um, high quality observations uh, by, by mycologists and community scientists could increasingly, um, could significantly increase the curated database. So if you're sitting on dozens of high quality mushroom observations or maybe hundreds or thousands, we would appreciate the, the mass import. So why should you join the Fundus Biodiversity Database? Your observations can be identified by professional mycologists and highly ranked amateur identifiers. You will learn about how to create high quality observations and you are helping scientists and conservationists better understand and protect fungi by increasing information on their distribution, habitat, and seasonality. So if you haven't made up your mind to join our FBD already, let me just tell you how easy it is to join and maybe it, to make it even easier. So if you haven't already, you can make an iNaturalist account and download the app on your smartphone. Then the next step is to search for Fundus Biodiversity Database in the search bar of that app. You can press join project and now you're in. So you can begin uploading high quality mushroom observations to INAT and then um, you can do this individually or through a bulk ad. A similar, a similar program is planned for a mushroom observer. And then just a kind of a quick overview of what it looks like to upload a, an observation on your smartphone. Um, this image over here on the left shows the interface of when I upload, uh, when, when I'm in the process of uploading an observation with my images. Um, you just wanna make sure to press the, the button that says projects. Once you've joined the Fundus Biodiversity Database, find that project and then turn it on. And then you can upload or share your observation and it'll be in the Fundus Biodiversity Database. Once again, there are instructions on how to bulk add your observations on the website. Fundus's third and final program is accessible sequencing, where DNA sequencing is accessible to clubs and individuals at low cost or through Fundus grants. This program has resulted in thousands of new sequences, including many of species that are rare or new to science, this program will go dormant, though, in December of 2021, until new funding sources are unlocked. So far, Fundus community scientists have documented and sequenced over 7,000 specimens with another 1,000 in the queue. Many of the new sequenced specimens represent new, undescribed species, some experts think that as many as 10 to 20 percent of sequenced fungal collections of some taxa in North America could be new to science. And uh, the possibility of sequencing an undescribed species is definitely a motivator for some amateur mycophiles. Our original emphasis in 2017 was to help amateurs get specimens documented online and get DNA sequenced. Amateurs have registered over 200 what we call registered local registered fundus local projects across North America, and not all of these projects are for sequencing. Um, you know, a lot of them exist simply uh, to document fungal biodiversity, but all of these projects have the option of applying for a fundus grant. Have had the option, at least in the past, for applying for a fundus grant to submit specimens for DNA sequencing. Projects originally set up for amateur sequencing can still continue and new ones, new projects can be added without sequencing at this time. As this accessible sequencing program lies dormant, Fundus encourages community scientists to document their observations or find other means to sequence your specimens. We have accessible sequencing options outlined on our website under the sequence tab as well. Uh, to highlight one of our fundus local projects, um, the Greenwood Fungi Phenology Project uh, located in New York City has uh, also a wonderful website that you should check out that's extremely detailed and informative. This fundus local project has also received some limelight in a New York Times article that also has a superb, superb title, 
a cemetery's biggest secret, lots of weird mushrooms. The Phonology Project's website says that the Greenwood Cemetery is one of the richest and most diverse fungal habitats in New York City. Fungi of every kind can be found here all year round, whether in the grass, under trees, or on stumps, branches, and twigs. Over 270 species of fungi have been documented here, from the extremely common to the very rare, and Fundus's very own Sigurd Jacob, who has played a, an incredibly vital role in the evolution of Fundus. Um, this is her project up in New York City. Accessible sequencing learnings. We have learned a lot about engaging community scientists in sequencing fungi. A major challenge as an all volunteer organization was giving guidance and timely feedback to participants, most of whom had little or no scientific training. Similarly, relying on volunteers for program administration and tracking and specimen tracking led to service gaps. And finally, making sense of the data generated. Knowing if a sequence could be a new species requires deep professional level knowledge. We are exploring opportunities for high throughput sequencing technologies that are lower co cost, but also require higher volumes. The future of Fundus is exciting and we have gained a ton of experience in this new frontier of community science. Though there is absolutely a lot more to do and a lot, a lot greater area to cover. Looking forward, Fundus plans to develop rare fungi and habitat challenges, expand the Fundus biodiversity database by orders of magnitude, and explore high throughput sequencing and environmental DNA sampling as a part of our accessible sequencing program. The end point of all of this work is to provide data on threatened species to nature serve, natural heritage programs, and IUCN red list working groups. With more community science generated data also comes the responsibility to manage them and maintain standards useful to scientists, conservationists, and land managers. We hope that you are inspired to help take action towards a world in which the fungal kingdom is fully documented, understood, appreciated, utilized, and protected. There are a few ways you can help fund us. You can volunteer with us. You can always send us an email with particular skill sets that you are interested in offering. You can add your high quality mushroom observations to the biodiversity database on INAT, as well as explore the other ways to step into further engagement with sequencing, vouchering, or even becoming a super user or a superstar. You can document rare fungi on INAT or MO, and Fundus is always grateful for donations. Last but not least, tell your friends. Tell your friends about these rare fungi. Tell your friends about Fundus. Tell your friends about how easy it is to upload their high quality observations onto our Fundus biodiversity database. We do have some specific current volunteer openings to consider and to share with your friends. These include web designers for the rare fungi challenges, as well as the biodiversity database, um, identifiers and curators for the biodiversity database on INAT and Mushroom Observer. We're always looking for deep Funga blog editors and blog authors and contributors. So if you have, if you are passionate about sharing stories um, about fungal biodiversity and conservation, um, please send these stories our way. Um, if you're interested in being an editor, that's an option as well. And we're always looking for volunteers for website updating and design, as well as DNA sequence screening. Of course, Fundus would not be complete without the help of one another. So thanks to Bill Sheehan for helping me prepare for this presentation. And thank you to the many people who have helped Fundus get to this point and who are currently breathing life into it. If you have any questions, this is the time to take them. And definitely think about describing, subscribing to our newsletter. It's a bi-monthly newsletter that features a bunch of great um, resources and information. Follow us on social media, email us if you have any questions or ideas, and my contact email is at the bottom there. And uh, thank you to all. I am so honored to represent Fundus at such a stellar celebration of 
fungi expertise and wisdom. So here I am, I haven't gone anywhere. Um, thank you all.